Hey, Christian Sex Ed family. Today we are going to be answering the question, is BDSM okay in marriage? Now, I know you're probably thinking, uh-oh, is this going to be pretty rated R? And the answer to that question is yes. Uh, this is going to be a mature conversation because this is a question that is often, often asked in my inbox. I mean, tons of people have sent me messages. Hey, Dane, is this okay to do in marriage? And everyone may not be interested in doing it, but they're curious. So I do not blame them. So today we're going to be talking about is BDSM okay in marriage? We're going to be talking about what is it? Why is it popular? What does scripture say about sex? And ultimately, does the Bible forbid it? So let's get started. What is BDSM? The B stands for bondage. The D stands for discipline, the S stands for sadism, and the M stands for masochism. So BDSM, pretty much, um, it's a term that's used to describe different aspects of sex that involve dominance, uh, submission, and control. And this practice typically involves one partner taking on a more dominant role during sex, while the other is more submissive. So the acronym can be divided into BDSM, bondage, discipline, dominance, submission, as sadism and in masochism. Bondage is restricting your partner's freedom of movement. For example, using ropes, handcuffs, or other restraints during sex. Discipline can be, you know, when the couple agrees upon rules and punishments for a dominant partner to, you know, exert control over a submissive partner. The dominance, that can be the act of showing dominance over a physical partner, either during sex or outside of the bedroom. And then submission, uh, the act of showing submission to the dominant partner's actions and wishes. And then the sadism, the masochism, which would be pleasure that a partner may feel from either inflicting pain, sadism, or receiving pain, masochism, either physical or emotional. So within BDSM, you have a lot of different things. You have special bondage ropes, collars, the penis and ball torture, the breath play where they're cutting off oxygen, you have smothering, um, breast torture, pain play, and some of the lighter acts of BDSM may be like role play, ropes, biting, bondage, whips, and, and sex toys. So why is this popular? A lot of people may think this is something that just grew in popularity after Fifty Shades of Grey. No, no. BDSM has been around for ages. Matter of fact, arts and texts from ancient Rome show that physical pain was used as an erotic stimulus. So this idea of inflicting pain during sex to, you know, stimulate someone has been around for a long time. So Fifty Shades of Grey may be popular now. Matter of fact, that book uh, sold 100 million copies. So this is something that people are pretty interested in. And then studies show that about 47% of women and 60% of men fantasize about dominating someone in sex. So this is what's in people. So this is why they're so curious. Why else is it popular? People do it because they want to spice up their sex life. Some say their research may suggest that it lessens stress and improves mental health. Um, some will use it as a means of in increasing the trust and security. So their their idea is that they're pushing these boundaries together as a way to strengthen and deepen trust. And so there's a number of reasons why people do it. But ultimately, it comes down to the question that we're answering today. Is BDSM OK for married Christians to practice? I went ahead and I asked this question on my page, Christian Sex Ed, and it was pretty split. 54 uh, percent of the respondents do not think that married couples should use BDSM. That's right. So 46% think BDSM is okay. First, I want to give my answer to that, but I want to go through a couple of scriptures so we can have a little bit of context about what the Bible says about sex. That way, that way we can kind of go into the BDSM. So first, 1 Corinthians 7 and 2 says, but since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relations with his own wife and each woman with her own husband. And then Hebrews 13 and 4 says this, marriage is to be held in honor among all and the marriage bed is to be undefiled for fornicators and adulterers. God will judge. So in other words, the marriage bed should be kept pure. God designed sex and sexual intimacy to be for a husband and wife. 
anything outside of that, the Bible declares as sin. We have fornication, which is uh, two unmarried people having sex. We have adultery, which is when one or both of the parties having sex are married to someone else. Then we have homosexuality, which is having sex with the same sex. Then we have pornography, which is receiving sexual gratification through your eyes of someone that's not your spouse. We know some of the things that the Bible says that we cannot do when you're not married, right? However, when it comes to actually being married and having sex, the Bible doesn't seem to give too many restrictions on what a husband and a wife can do in their bedroom, aside from the obvious, you know, the no pornography, no threesomes and no swapping, no people watching. But essentially, the husband and wife, you know, they kind of have a lot of freedom to explore what they like as long as the bed is pure. So and I kind of want to say this before we even dive into this. When it comes to sex and marriage, you may not agree with what some spouses do in the bed, but it's really between them and God. Not everyone has the same conviction. Some people uh, were brought up and raised in um, the idea that the only position you can have in the marriage bed is missionary. Everything else outside of that is sin. So there's so many different beliefs and so many people have so many different um, convictions. You know, for example, some people are opposed to anal or, or oral sex in marriage. However, nothing in the Bible actually prohibits it. Some will say it's sodomy, but it's not. If you want to dive more into that topic, please, please check out my video. I give a pretty detailed breakdown on anal sex and oral sex. Now, let me just say this. At least in, in regards to anal sex, I do think that it is not, I don't believe the anus was designed for sex. The anus is used to get rid of waste. I don't think it's meant for thrusting and penetration. So that's just kind of my thought on that. But check out those videos. They're on my playlist or in the other podcast. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and dive more into BDSM. Are there any aspects of it that a Christian should be cautious of? I'm going to say yes. This is one thing that's kind of debated, debated, but the use of sex aids, this is something that's um, used, you know, quite heavily in BDSM. You have like clit suction toys, you have dildos, you have strap-ons and things of that nature. The reason, one of the reasons why I'm kind of opposed to that is because you don't want to replace the husband or the wife's interaction with each other's uh, genitals. In other words, using a toy instead of a penis can be dangerous. You wouldn't want your spouse becoming more dependent on a toy or liking the toy more than the actual interaction or uh, what her husband brings to the table. You know, we were designed to use our genitals for pleasuring each other, in my opinion, you know, and, and not toys. And the Bible obviously shows us that our genitals were used for pleasing each other. So, you know, I, I don't see toys as really a means of doing that. Now, I will say this. If your spouse is unable to have sex because of disability or damage, or maybe they have an extremely hard time having an orgasm and you still want to pleasure them, then, you know, maybe that maybe the toy can be an option for you guys. But ultimately, I, I do think that sex aids, especially when you're capable of having sex, is something that I'm not really a fan of. I don't think you want to become dependent upon that. If the sex is not good, then you need to communicate with your spouse and figure out how you guys can get on the same page and make it better. So what else am I concerned with when it comes down to BDSM? I'm definitely concerned with the sadism side and the dominance side of things, which if you remember, I read it earlier, is receiving sexual pleasure by inflicting pain on your partner. Between that and the dominant that's really stitched in BDSM, you need to be cautious because for some, it may not be as innocent as it appears. Some people really enjoy the feeling of being superior, having uh, control and releasing anger. And to be honest, I think that type of mindset, especially during sex, can lead you down a path that's not so good. Dominating a person by whips, chains and uh, humiliation for your own sexual pleasure, to me, it does not sound like a good mindset to have. Even if it is consensual, the idea of just dominating and the humiliation that's associated with certain aspects of BDSM, like how is that life giving? I think when God designed sex, he designed it to be an expression of love for each other and obviously as a means for procreation. And when you look at some of those dark aspects of BDSM, uh, it doesn't seem to fall into the loving your spouse category. Another thing I'd be cautious about when it comes to BDSM is role playing Anytime you're trying to live out a fantasy, I think you need to be cautious because a fantasy is something you wish you could have, but you don't have. So in terms of sex, what is it that you wish your spouse has 
that they don't have. For example, like why would a, a husband want his spouse to wear a blonde wig and dress up as a cop? Like what's the origin of this fantasy? Did it come from pornography? Did it come from a video? Is there a blonde cop you, you saw somewhere? Trying to make your spouse be something that they're not, especially in the bedroom, definitely raise some red flags. Or even in terms of like, you know how in some role playing, it's like you meet somebody and you have one night stand with them. The other question I'd beg would be, why do you have a fantasy of having premarital sex with someone that you don't know that isn't your spouse? Granted, I know that in the role play they are, but the question is, why are you trying to live out something that's not godly? The idea is not even godly. Um, so I think you really have to check your motives and, and your heart when it comes to some of these th things when it comes to role playing. So that's... Those are a couple. There's some other aspects of it, obviously, that, that I think probably aren't too healthy for marriage. But, but ultimately, I think it's good to be cautious because certain sex practices, even while married, may lead to a place of fantasy that can be detrimental to your marriage. What you're living out right now through these certain sex practices turn into something that could destroy your marriage. I and mean, also, I think there's a difference between like fun sexual play and practicing BDSM. For fun sexual play, some, an example I think would be like blindfolding or handcuffing or maybe one person taking control, things like that. I don't really see nothing wrong with that. I think that's just sometimes you explore and you have fun with your spouse, right? But when you come to the BDS, more the deeper side of like BDSM, like the choking, the torture, the actual physical pain, uh, the collars, the cutting off the oxygen, the crazy sex toys. I think those are the things that uh, I probably would not recommend entirely, at least for me. Now, some people may have a different view, but for me, you could be going down a path that may not be good. So even though there are some reservations within BDSM, ultimately the question is, is it okay? So my answer is this. I would say it's up to you and your spouse. Reason being, one, the Bible does not forbid it. Two, uh, the Bible is pretty clear about what's not okay when it comes to sex. Premarital sex is not okay. Homosexuality, bestiality, adultery, uh, lusting over someone other than your spouse, withholding sex from your spouse, but it never does mention anything about BDSM, which leads me to believe that what a husband and a wife choose to do in the bedroom is their business. And there aren't too many restrictions, at least from the, the scriptural standpoint, aside from like, you know, obviously no threesomes, no porn, no swapping, the obvious things. And But even though while the Bible may not address the use of some of the BDSM practices, I think there still needs to be mutual consent and love. And I think couples should use their best judgment and follow their conviction. God created sex to be about love, sacrifice, mutual respect, dignity, and care. There are many practices or aspects within BDSM that don't offer that. But ultimately, I think God gave us exactly what we need to have good sex. He gave us the, the tools. He gave us the pieces that we need. So be careful experimenting and trying too many like crazy things. I'm not saying don't have fun because I think you should have fun when you're having sex. You should be free with your spouse. Have fun. But I think there's a good fun and a, and a side of fun where, whoa, okay, maybe you got to be cautious. Because I'm not, me, I'm not the type of person that's going to say, hey, yeah, stick to just missionary. Have fun with your spouse. Explore. Do fun things. But watch out for of the dark side of things, you know, don't try to, you know, I guess pervert something that's good, right? And for my married people, please have sex uh, with your spouse. Talk about your wants and make sure you are both satisfied and have good sex and have it often. We have needs. The Bible says the husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs and the wife should fulfill her husband's needs. The wife gives her authority over her body to her husband and the husband gives authority over his body to his wife. That's 1 Corinthians 7, chapter 3 through 4. So have sex. Have good sex. Don't withhold sex from your spouse. Enjoy it. Have fun. Talk about it. But really, because ultimately sex in marriage, I always say it's a big part of marriage and a little part of marriage. It's a big part because if you're not having it enough or you're not satisfied, it can lead to a lot of issues. But it's a small part of marriage because the reality is you're probably not having sex all day, every day. But uh, you still need to make sure you find time to have those intimate moments and connection uh, with your spouse because it's good for you. It's good for the both of you. It's going to relieve stress. It's going to bring you guys closer together. It's going to make you guys feel good, right? So um, maybe today you're, you're listening to this podcast and maybe you're single. I hope that this 
gives you kind of an idea, just some things to think about before you get married, because these are important topics. And that's why I'm so glad I get a chance to answer these questions. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. If you have not read Christian Sex Ed, my book, you can find it on Amazon or pretty much anywhere. All right. So thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. God bless you. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.